You're running for governor. Why don't you look in the eyes of the people of the state of Florida and say to them, if you're reelected, you will serve a full four-year term as governor. Yes or no? But I just want to make things very, very clear. The only worn-out old donkey I'm looking to put out to pasture is Charlie Chris. Hi, what's up, guys? Third time is always the charm, so today I'm going to talk about the governor's races. I've just, I've just on the House and the Senate, so the governorships are really the remaining ones. And I'm going to take uh, a lot of consideration of the RCP averages and their predictions, because they do offer a lot more than what their regular polls do. And let's be clear, there are many states here, like New Mexico, Minnesota, Michigan, and New York, of course and more, who just weeks ago were thought to be out of play for the GOP, but now they are surging everywhere and the Democrats don't know where to spend their money, so it's going to be a bloodbath. Now I'm also going to use the polls, and of course I'm going to use Wikipedia here as a source for all the polling, so let's get to it. Now, first of all, to fill in the safe ones, there are some ones that are quite obvious. Texas and Florida are quite obviously likely just margin wise and then the rest of these here i believe are going to be safe democrats are probably safely going to pick up these states here colorado is uh, likely hawaii is safe and then you come to the state of california which i believe is actually the last one yes this is it in terms of safe states i mean you can uh, look at the average average for RCP and of course they are even more strict in what they call safe and not. I guess I can add Rhode Island to the likely column as something that's quite easy to decide on and the state of Alaska. Now it starts to get interesting because the states that are competitive this cycle are everything from safe blue to safe red. We can have a Democrat in Oklahoma, we can have the Republican Lee Seldin in New York, so if Selden or Hoffmeister wins, that would uh, that would certainly be a big blow to the status quo and the red-blue divide that is currently existing. And uh, yes, there are also polls here that I'm probably going to take a look at just to get the newest ones, because there are someone who came out so recently that I have not gotten to look at them yet. But without further ado, let's get into the video. now. I think it is quite safe to start with the state of Illinois, I'm going to put it as lean democratic, and that is for the simple reason that Darren Bailey might not be moderate enough to win the general, but he can certainly make it close because it does energize the base a lot and now the national environment is really hostile to Democrats, so I think that he could possibly get it within five. In the same category I do have the state of Pennsylvania, which is a bit more difficult, the candidate is a bit more controversial. And Josh Shapiro, despite uh, criticism, I think he does give the image of a very moderate, center-typical Democrat, and therefore is completely uncontroversial to vote for. Just like us is the moderate in the Senate race, Shapiro is the moderate in the governor's race. Then we go to the state of Alabama, which actually I forgot to fill in, that sucks. Then we go to the state of Arizona, where Karolek has opened up a consistent lead, so I'm going to put it in a likely category for her now. She is almost certainly going to win by more than 5 points, probably not more than 10, even though there was at least one poll that showed it, but yeah, it goes likely for now. In the state of Kansas, I'm actually also tempted to, to put it likely, but I'm actually going to put it lean because there are just too few polls from the state of Kansas. If we just look at it, yes, I mean, the, the pure number of polls are not comparable to any other state, and many of them, actually most of them, have Laura Kelly, the incumbent Democrat, winning. And because of that, I'm not confident enough to put it in likely R, even though I think in the end the wave and Derek Schmidt being the candidate and no significant third party, I think, is going to give him the victory. Now, Dennis Pyle, I really don't know too much about him, but anyway, independents tend to do worse in general compared to polling. Let's go on. The state of Georgia is actually also likely, and uh, this should cover most of the 
easy to categorize states. I'm going to quickly put main and Connecticut into the lean democratic column. Yes, both of them could be likely, but in the end there are some polls that show, show it close. Some polls show the Democrats with a double digit lead, but simply because of the environment and uh, the trends that we've seen from states like, states like this, Susan Collins vastly outperformed the polls in 2020, and previous Republican governor candidates have done quite well in the state of Connecticut, so I'm not co confident to put it in the likely column, even though Bob Stefanowski has not run the same campaign this time as he did last time. And now we have a map that looks more and more like what we have seen from RCP. Now, Hoffmeister and Stitt. This is a quite surprising one. Of course, she is a former Republican. I believe she just became a Democrat in order to run for governor. I'm going to put it still as a lean Republican, because as you could see, the polls did give a quite mixed message. Otherwise, this would be, would be safe, certainly. And another one that I'm very confident in putting a lean Republican is the state of Nevada. Joe Lombardo has led consistently in the polls, and I'm going to show you. And the reason I have Lombardo winning is because the majority of polls have him up, and the ones that do not have him up are quite democratic leaning. I mean, you have both completely unbiased polls like CBS YouGov and Data for Progress that have it either tied or him up, and then you have more Republican leaning polls like Trafalgar, where he's up by seven, and the Siena Research New York Times, which otherwise have been very bad in this cycle actually has him up by 4. So Lombardo is definitely on the edge of winning, but recently he has actually performed better in the polls than Laxalt, so I think he might win with a bigger margin. The next one is also a flip, also a Democratic incumbent going down, and that is the state of Wisconsin. Tim Michaels is the Republican candidate, and even though he has sort of had an uphill climb, he won a divisive primary, he was the Trump-backed candidate, and then you had the establishment-backed candidate, Rebecca Cleefish, who was supported by Pence and others, and I honestly think that if she was only supported by people like Scott Walker, she would have won, but since she had to be associated with the Pence, Nikki Haley wing of the party, she lost because then suddenly she was the opposition to a Trump candidate. Now, many polls have actually showed Evers winning this one, but lately, as we are coming closer and closer, Tim Michaels is winning in all of these polls, including Fox News and Data for a progress that we know are not uh, biased towards the Republicans. Patriot polling, I believe, certainly are, just based on the name, but regardless, this one goes lean Republican. The thing is, Wisconsin always underestimates Republicans, like Trump in 2020 and 2016, Ron Johnson in 2016, and Yes, 2018 was the exception, the lone exception. Anyway, we go now, let's see, to the state of Michigan. Michigan is the one that has been fluctuating a lot. If we look at the, at the latest polls, they actually still predict that it is going to flip. But there are so, there are so many big differences in the polls here. There is in, insider advantage, tie, Trafalgar, tie, but then other polls come and have with Whitmer up by sometimes ridiculous margins. So actually I'm going to be bold to and say it is tilting Republican, the first tilt state of today. And now I believe that we're going into the five, sorry, four remaining states that are the biggest toss-ups of them all. And I'm going to start with the state of Oregon. Oregon is actually a quite blue state, but right now I do have it as a lean Republican simply because of the strength of the Republican candidates, the unpopularity of the Democratic candidate, Tina Kotek. I mean, she is hammering in the polls. And we all know this, we've all seen this, but just to bring some joy, I'm going to show it to you again. Yes, there are some polls that have Kotek up as well. But uh, as Betsy Johnson have been completely collapsing in the polls, the surprising outcome is that Drazen has been surging. It's not been in favor of Kotek at all. Only these two polls since, well, since the summer has had Kotek up, and otherwise the surge is going to help Dresden as it will help other Republicans in other states. So yes, New Mexico, Minnesota, and New York. 
I think I'm actually going to finish with New York because it's such an important and interesting race where Lee Selvin is running a phenomenal campaign in the state of Minnesota. Let's see. The RCB average here is a 4.3 and I actually have not decided upon this yet. And only 4 in New Mexico. And the polls that do have him up, let's see, Trafalgar and then you have Hem Emerson which is extremely close. I'm actually going to make a prediction both now. I think that Minnesota will stay with the Democrats, but that New Mexico is going to flip to Ron Shetty. And yes, I know that in the past polling had not underestimated Republicans in New Mexico by that much. But Ron Shetty did a very good campaign in 2020 where he outperformed the polls by a lot, and this time the national environment will be even more favorable to Republicans. And as I said, the polls also don't have him that far down. When it comes to Minnesota, I was actually quite wrong in 2020. It trended dramatically to the Democrats, while all conventional wisdom based on, well, just facts and common sense would suggest it would go otherwise. So it's tilt Democratic in Minnesota, tilt Republican in the state of New Mexico, and then we go to New York. New York, New York, New York, where do we begin? Of course, RCP is the only one who has moved it to toss, but Fox News have put it as lean. And the polls here currently have Hochul up by 4.8 in the RCP aggregate. Of course, the RCP aggregate is the most accurate one. And it proves that he still has an uphill climb. Can it get closer? Certainly, but right now I still think it tilts to the Democrats, Katie Hochul. Of course, if it flipped, that would be enormous. It would be maybe the greatest thing on election night. But we'll see. We'll see. Right now, I don't think Selin has the advantage, but even if we, he gets this close, he probably helps four or five new Republican House members to get elected. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Godspeed.